Hello and welcome to a brand new season of Big Game Bound. I'm Chris Hagan. 32 teams all with the same goal, but there can be only one. The 2022 NFL campaign kicks off this week, beginning with the reigning Super Bowl champion Rams hosting the Bills. It's our week one marquee matchup. And for a preview, we bring in our Dave Pingalore from out in L.A. Dave, the Rams were crowned champions in SoFi Stadium just seven months ago, and they'll begin the title defense there as well. Does it feel like this is a team that can pull off that rare Super Bowl repeat? Uh, well, they certainly believe they can. The question is, will they or not? Uh, it's all going to be about Matthew Stafford, the quarterback, uh, back for a second season with the Rams, leading them to that Super Bowl win last year, and how healthy can they remain as well? Uh, they got Cam Akers, obviously, in the backfield. Uh, they got the, the head coach that just uh, did a big contract extension. So I, I would say they're probably one of the top three three teams in the NFC. I mean, I, I don't think I'm really going out on a limb there, but it's really how healthy and how well Matthew Stafford actually plays this season for sure. Stafford reborn last season with the Rams led him to a championship. But what do we know right now about the QB's health? Well, you know, during the uh, training camp sessions, there was uh, there were some problems with his uh, right elbow with some inflammation. But as of yesterday, he says he is ready to go. He is 100 uh, percent to be part of this season. And of course, getting ready for the Bills on Thursday night football. So he, he says he's 100 percent. We shall all find out uh, once they do kick things off against the Bills inside of SoFi Stadium. Well, on the other side of the ball, no doubt about it, the premier defensive player in the game, Aaron Donald, is back. What kind of pieces, though, are in place around him? I mean, they've got, they've got a number of great, uh, you know, defensive pieces to what they did last year. I mean, obviously, they got Jalen Ramsey back, um, burned a little bit against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, last year, but uh, was able to recover from something like that to get themselves through the postseason into the Super Bowl eventually to win the Super Bowl. But this defense, we do know, runs all around Aaron Donald. If Aaron Donald is 100%, this defense is 100%. So up front, it's all about how well uh, Aaron Donald performs in becoming one of the highest paid defensive players this year in the uh, offseason. They made a deal with him. Um, I, I, I really don't see any problems defensively. I think it's more on the offensive side of the ball, whether or not the, they can actually make it to that next level once again. I mean, they're already there. They got the Super Bowl rings to prove it and championship banner going up inside of SoFi Stadium. So it's I think it's really all about the offense. Defensively, they, they're pretty much there. Well, no doubt a pretty big measuring stick week one against the Bills. The Rams slight underdogs on the home field. So, Ping, when we wake up Friday morning, are the Rams 1-0? Uh, who I'm like kind of like day, gazing off into the, into the sun here at, uh, in Southern California. Yes, the Rams, there's my stone cold lock, knock off the Buffalo Bills, they'll be 1-0. Because if they don't, then everyone's going to think the Rams are terrible. So uh, the, take the plus 2.5, the spread is, take the Rams. On the money line as well, why don't we just money line the whole thing? Yeah, if you're going Rams, got to go money line. Hey, Dave, thanks for the time. I'm sure we'll talk again soon. Thank you. It's going to be a great Thursday night. Let's take a look at the Sunday slate at 1 p.m. An NFC South showdown in Atlanta as the Saints visit the Falcons. The Niners will be in Chicago to take on the Bears. Another division matchup in Cincy between the Steelers and AFC champion Bengals. The Eagles will travel to Detroit to face the Hard Knocks Lions. The Pats head to South Florida for a division matchup with the Dolphins. Also at 1. The Ravens on the road against the Jets. The Jaguars in D.C. as Washington plays its first ever game as the Commanders. And down in Houston, it's the Matt Ryan-led Colts against the Texans. And how about this for a week one storyline? The Browns will be in Charlotte to take on the Panthers and their new starting quarterback, Baker Mayfield. Here's our Will Kunkel. Baker Mayfield versus the Browns, otherwise known as the Carolina Panthers versus the Browns. Now that gets us going here week one in Charlotte. And for the first time in quite a while, there is actually legitimate hope and excitement around this Panthers team. Why? Because running back Christian McCaffrey went healthy. He's the best running back in the NFL, is healthy again. And yes, obviously Baker Mayfield. You cannot win in this league without a quarterback. And it looks like Baker is the team's best quarterback since Cam Newton. But the 2018 version is now 2022. But that's not the storyline.
The storyline is Baker going against his former team. We love the drama. We got to drum it up. But the team in front office, this is the same team in front office that put the rumors out there of Baker not being mature enough to lead an NFL team. So, yeah, this game does mean more to Baker, and he's admitted that. But that doesn't mean he's going full revenge mode. I think it's a great storyline. Obviously, there's history involved, um, you know, leading up to this week. There's other games in the NFL that guys are playing their former teams. It's just it's the excitement leading up to week one that um, I think is building that anticipation up. But for me, it's the familiarity. Anytime you're playing guys, you know, it makes it just more interesting, more fun. Uh, you get to smack talk a little bit with your buddies that you've been with for a little bit. And uh, you know how to, to poke and prod and get the best out of them. And it's I'm looking forward to the opportunity. Um, I think with any player, if I ever felt like they're at all distracted, I would certainly say something. But I felt no distraction from him, and I felt no distraction from any of our other guys. Um, you know, when you're facing a good team like this, you, you know that you need to focus on your job to have a chance to win. So I, I've, I've, you know, I haven't seen anything that worries me at all. Here's what I think. This is a shove it game for Baker, not a revenge game. But not against the guys on the field. Those guys are his friends, they're his former teammates. This one is personal against the ownership group and the front office. But the key is controlling his emotions after a big play. Do not hurt your new team to prove a point to your old team. For Big Game Bound, I'm Will Kunkel. Four games in the 425 Eastern window. The Giants travel to Nashville to tussle with the Titans. A good one out west between the Chiefs and homestanding Cardinals. A division showdown at SoFi Stadium as the Raiders visit the Chargers. And in Minnesota, a week one NFC North clash between the Packers and Vikings. Let's hear from our MK Burgess. It's been a while since Sammy Watkins has felt in control of his own destiny. Most of his NFL career has been hampered by injuries. However, the wideout said earlier this offseason that this is a new start for him. He joined the Packers this spring. Now, Matt LaFleur has talked about his addition to the offense, and Aaron Rodgers says he likes his work ethic and what the veteran brings not only to the table but to the wide receiver room as well. As week one approaches against the Vikings for the Packers, Watkins says it's time for the safe bets to be off. In his words, it's go time. I'm really just getting off to a good start, getting a win. Um, I think for me, it's about winning. Um, and, and whatever I have to do to go out there and get a win, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not too much focused on um, how well I'm going to play. When, I, when I'm right and I'm um, healthy, I play well. Putting it to, to a test um, come this Sunday and going out there really having fun and, and making the plays that's presented to me. But ultimately, I'm going out there trying to win a game. If you're not nervous or don't have the butterflies, maybe you're doing the wrong thing. So I'll be excited to see how I feel before the game. but. I know there's there's definitely excitement, and the excitement is paired with the anxiety uh, that comes from the pressure of the performance, uh, being in the microscope uh, of you know your your teammates, the fans, the country. For Big Game Bound, I'm M. K. Burgess. And on Sunday Night Football, a rematch of Week One of last season. It's the Buccaneers and Cowboys, but this one is in Dallas. Let's hear from our Dan Lucas down in Tampa. The Bucs are about to kick off arguably the toughest opening month for any NFL team. After they play the Cowboys, they're right back on the road to face their nemesis, the New Orleans Saints. Then it's back home for the Green Bay Packers, followed by the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, game one is an interesting matchup in Dallas, a rematch from last season's opener when the Bucs escaped with a last second field goal. On that night, the Bucs overcame four turnovers to win. Now, that would be much harder to do if those miscues happen in Jerry's world on Sunday. Well, quarterback Tom Brady may not have his pal Gronk to throw to this year, but the Bucks have handed him a who's who of elite options, including veteran tight end Kyle Rudolph and veteran receivers Julio Jones and Russell Gage. And they join Mike Evans, who hopes to record his ninth straight season of at least 1,000 receiving yards. But there are huge questions on the offensive line, which replaces three of last year's five starters. Pay attention to the center, Robert Hainsey. He is filling in for the injured Ryan Jensen. And the left guard is a rookie, Luke Gedeke, who impressed in training camp, but had mixed results during the preseason. On defense, the Bucks were third best in the NFL last year against the run. And now they add big run-stuffing defensive lineman Akeem Hicks to play next to Vita Vea. But the Bucks had trouble getting to the Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott a year ago, only sacking him once. That pressure falls on outside linebackers Shaq Barrett and Joe Tryon-Shoyenka. For Big Game Bound, I'm Dan Lucas. 
And on Monday night, another Hollywood script. Longtime Seahawk Russell Wilson returns to Seattle as quarterback of the Denver Broncos. And speaking of Hollywood star power, pure charisma and leading man good looks, it's the one and only son of sweetness, Jared Payton in Chicago. JP, are you ready for some football? Oh, Hagen, what is going on, man? I've been waiting for this moment all my life. Ever since we left each other out in La La Land, now it's time for football again, and I look forward to doing these picks with you, my man. Let's go. It's been seven months, and it's time to get started with Peyton's picks. Week one, we got a possible Super Bowl preview. Thursday night football, the Bills visiting the reigning champion Rams. You know what, Chris? This is one of those matchups like you were talking about. It comes down to two teams that could be playing for the Super Bowl championship in Arizona. So I really like both of these teams, but I'm going to go here. You look defensively for the Rams, how strong they are. Aaron Donald and company, you know they're going to be ready to play. And Matthew Stafford as well with that elbow injury. And listen, Sean McVay said they're going to let him throw 50 times a game if they have to. So he is ready to go. But Chris, I'm going to go with the Bills on this one. Everybody is riding the Bills, and we talk about the AFC and how tough it is. The Bills, Josh Allen, I mean, an MVP candidate early on in this season. I just think offensively, and we talk about well-balanced teams, I think the Bills are super well-balanced, even though the Rams are as well. I just think when you look at the quarterback play, Josh Allen, he's coming for revenge this year. He wants to be in Arizona for the Super Bowl. I'm going with the Bills taking week one in that first matchup of the week. Now, everybody wants to end up in Arizona, and two Super Bowl hopefuls will be there this Sunday. We're talking about the Cardinals and the Chiefs. Man, Chris, both of these teams are really good, and you talk about balance with the last two teams we were talking about. These two teams are balanced as well. If, if you look at where both teams are starting at the beginning of the season, Definitely Arizona on the offensive side probably has more weapons. Kyler Murray has to figure out, can he be that guy to live up to that contract? There's going to be a lot of pressure starting out for them week one. But on the flip side, man, you know how I always kind of went with my picks last year. And, and it's one of those things. It comes down to Patrick Mahomes. And I understand when you lose a weapon like Terry Kill that people are starting to think, well, some of these other receivers, can he find that chemistry with these guys early on in the season? Could there be some hiccups and some roadblocks? Yes, there could be as well. But I think Kansas City is going to rely on running on the ball and setting up what Patrick Mahomes can do. And I think some of those kind of connections are going to be formed early on. And when you got a guy like Travis Kelsey, who is the, the, probably the toughest matchup in all of football, I still think they have weapons and you still have to me, if not the greatest quarterback in the league in Patrick Mahomes. So for me, I'm going with Kansas City to beat the cards week one. Let's go. All right. And finally, Monday Night Football. How about this? Russell Wilson and now the Broncos he'll be back in Seattle taking on his old team the Seahawks like whoever was making up these schedules this <laughs> year Chris I'm telling you right now thank you so much because week one we have so much drama when it comes to NFL football and you got Russell Wilson who spent all of his career in Seattle now he gets a chance to be able to go back with the Broncos he just got paid and you know what that means he wants revenge to be able to go back to Seattle and take advantage this comes down to the matchup man the Broncos are just the better team on offense and defense Geno Smith I'm not really sure what's going to happen there DK Metcalf they have those two on offense but not enough to be able to kind of contend with what the Broncos have on the offensive side of the ball, this new look offense and seeing what Russell Wilson can do. I think it's going to be too much Broncos going up against his old squad, the Seattle Seahawks. I think the Broncos, they get the dub in this one. All right, let's recap week one. Peyton's picks. He likes the road teams. He likes the Bills on Thursday night to beat the champion Rams. He'll take his guy Mahomes and the Chiefs on the road against the Cardinals. And how about Russell? You can go home again. The Broncos over the Seahawks. JP, I'm with you. I think you're going 3-0 and this week, but as we know, that's really hard to do, especially when you're talking about the NFL. Thanks for the time. We'll do it again next week. You're the best. Listen, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. Appreciate <laughs> you. Once again this season, we'll be listening league-wide to what players and coaches have to say during the week, and you never know what you'll hear on an open mic. Welcome to 2022. 
I had to I had to slide it in there. No, I feel good. I feel good. I'm ready to go. No limitations. Um, you know, uh, still think there's, you know, I, I don't know. I feel great. I mean, I'm ready to go play. Um, can always be uh, can always be better. Can always try to feel like I'm 21 again. I'll keep trying. Coming off the ACL last year, everybody remembers what happened in the first game. <laughs> um, strike one. <laughs> Whether we win or lose this game doesn't, you know, it doesn't mean we're going to be Super Bowl champions or doesn't mean we're going to even go to the playoffs or anything like that. So we just got to constantly improve, constantly get better every week. Mitch Trubisky is our starting quarterback and our captain. Um, man, we're just really comfortable with what Mitch has shown us. Um, he's a guy that came to us with, with franchise quarterback experience, if you will. He's comfortable in those shoes. I don't care if the offense scores zero points. I know we can score on defense. I believe that's how good we are. So if there's games we got to win the game, that's what we got to do. Can there be a, a larger disparity in career win-loss total? Um, no, I, yeah, it would be a bigger deal, I think, if uh, Coach Belichick and I were on the field, uh, maybe doing like an Oklahoma drill. Um, but I don't, I don't foresee that happening. Uh, I don't think the fans would really pay for that. Now we're in the arena. You know, there's no more standing outside waiting for the uh, for the gates to open. Man, we're going in, and uh, and so now there's there's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. It's just us, and the heat's on. And uh, if you don't love that, then you don't belong. You don't belong up here. We got to play with our hair on fire. It's one game, and we're looking forward to playing this game. But it's not going to make or break our season. But the ultimate goal, like I said, is, is to win the Super Bowl, and you, you have to take it week by week, and this is week one. Thank you, guys. And just like that, we are done with our week one NFL previews for producer Phil Nardiello and all of our Next Star correspondents. I'm Chris Hagan. Thanks for logging on. We'll see you next time on Big Game Bound.